This video is for educational purposes. Kuala Lumpur is a federal territory and the capital city of Malaysia. It is one of the fastest growing cities in Asia and the largest city in Malaysia, covering an area of 243 square kilometers, 94 square miles, with a census population of 2,163,000 as of 2022. Greater Kuala Lumpur, also known as the Klang Valley, is an urban agglomeration of 7.564 million people as of 2018. It is among the fastest growing metropolitan regions in Southeast Asia, both in population and economic development. Kindly subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and families. The city serves as the cultural, financial, and economic center of Malaysia. It is also home to the Parliament of Malaysia and the Astana Negara, the official residence of the Yang Dipertuan Agon, monarch of Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur first developed around 1857 as a town serving the tin mines of the region and served as the capital of Selangor from 1880 until 1978. Kuala Lumpur was the founding capital of the Federation of Malaya and its successor, Malaysia. The city remained the seat of the executive and judicial branches of the Malaysian federal government until these were relocated to Putrajaya in early 1999. However, some sections of the political body still remain in Kuala Lumpur. The city is one of the three federal territories of Malaysia, enclaved within the state of Selangor, on the central west coast of peninsular Malaysia. Since the 1990s, the city has played host to many international sporting, political and cultural events, including the 1998 Commonwealth Games and the 2017 Southeast Asian Games. Kuala Lumpur has undergone rapid development in recent decades and is home to the tallest twin buildings in the world, the Patronus Towers, which have since become an iconic symbol of Malaysian development. Kuala Lumpur is well connected with neighboring urban regions such as Petaling Jaya via the rapidly expanding Klang Valley Integrated Transit System. Residents of the city can also travel to other parts of Malaysia through KL Central. Kuala Lumpur is one of the leading cities in the world for tourism and shopping and was the sixth most visited city in the world in 2019. The city houses three of the world's ten largest shopping malls. Kuala Lumpur ranks 70th in the world and second in Southeast Asia for the Economist Intelligence Unit's Global Livability Ranking and ninth in ASPAC and second in Southeast Asia for KPMG's Leading Technology Innovation Hub 2021. Kuala Lumpur was named World Book Capital 2020 by UNESCO. Kuala Lumpur means muddy confluence in Malay. Kuala is the point where two rivers join or an estuary, and Lumpur means mud. One suggestion is that it was named after Sungai Lumpur, Muddy River. In the 1820s a place named Sunjai Lumpur was said to be the most important tin-producing settlement up the Klang River. However this derivation does not account for this, Kuala Lumpur lies at the confluence of Gombak River and Klang River, and therefore should be named Kuala Gombak, since the Kuala is typically named after the river that joins a larger river or the sea. Some have argued that Sungai Lumpur in fact extended down to the confluence and therefore the point where it joined the Klang River would be Kuala Lumpur, although this Sungai Lumpur is said to be another river joining the Klang River 1.5 kilometers, 1 mile, upstream from the Gombak confluence, or perhaps located to the north of the Bata Caves area. It has also been proposed that Kuala Lumpur was originally named Pengkalan Lumpur, Muddy Landing Place, in the same way that Klang was once called Pengkalan Batu, Stone Landing Place, but became corrupted into Kuala Lumpur. Another theory says that it was initially a Cantonese word, Lampa, meaning, flooded jungle or, decayed jungle. There is no firm contemporary evidence for these suggestions other than anecdotes. The name may also be a corrupted form of an earlier forgotten name. The Journal of the Malayan Branch of the Royal Asiatic Society states that Raja Abdullah, who was involved in the Klang War, founded Kuala Lumpur, aside from also opening up tin mines upriver and had introduced the Chinese into the region. Chinese miners were involved in tin mining up the Selangor River in the 1840s about 16 kilometers, 10 miles, north of present-day Kuala Lumpur, and Mandaling Sumatrans led by Raja Asal and Sutan Puesa were also involved in tin mining and trade in the Ulu Klang region before 1860, and Sumatrans may have settled in the upper reaches of Klang River in the first quarter of the 19th century, or possibly earlier. Kuala Lumpur was originally a small hamlet of just a few houses and shops at the confluence of the Sungai Gombak and Sungai Klang, Klang River. Kuala Lumpur became established as a town c. 1857, when the Malay chief of Klang, Raja Abdullah bin Raja Jaffer, aided by his brother Raja Jumayat of Lukit, raised funds from Malaccan Chinese businessmen to hire Chinese miners from Lukit to open new tin mines there. The miners landed at Kuala Lumpur and continued on foot to Ampang, where they opened the first mine. 
Kuala Lumpur was the furthest point up the Klang River to which supplies could conveniently be brought by boat, and therefore became a collection and dispersal point serving the tin mines. Despite a high death toll from the malarial conditions of the jungle, the Ampong mine succeeded, and exported the first tin in 1859. At that time, Sutton Puesa was already trading near Ampong. Two traders from Lukit, Hiu Su and Yapa Zee, arrived in Kuala Lumpur and set up shops to sell provisions to miners in exchange for tin. The town, spurred on by tin mining, started to develop around Old Market Square, Medan Pazer, with roads radiating out towards Ampong as well as Pudu and Batu, the destinations became the names of these roads, Ampong Road, Pudu Road, and Batu Road, where miners had also begun to settle in, and peddling in Damansara. The miners formed gangs and the gangs frequently fought in this period, particularly factions of Kuala Lumpur and Kanching, mainly over control of the best tin mines. Leaders of the Chinese community were conferred the title of Captain China, Chinese headman, by the Malay chief, and Hiu Su, the early Chinese trader, became the first captain of Kuala Lumpur. The third Chinese captain of Kuala Lumpur, Yap Aloy, was appointed in 1868. Important Malay figures of early Kuala Lumpur also included Haji Mohammad Tahir, who became the Dato Dagang, chief of traders. The Menangkabas of Sumatra became another important group who traded and established tobacco plantations in the area. Notable Menangkabas included their headman, Dato Tsudi, Utsman Abdullah, and Haji Mohammad Taib, who was involved in the early development of Kampung Baru. The Menangkabas were also significant socio-religious figures, for example Utsman bin Abdullah was the first Qadi of Kuala Lumpur, as well as Muhammad Nur bin Ismail. Early Kuala Lumpur was a small town that suffered from many social and political problems, the buildings were made of wood and a tap, palm frond thatching. The buildings were prone to catching fire, and due to a lack of proper sanitation the town was plagued with diseases. It also suffered from a constant threat of flooding due to its location. The town became embroiled in the Selangor Civil War in part over control of revenue from the tin mines. Yap Aloy allied himself with Tengku Kudin, M.S., and the High San Secret Society, they fought against a rival secret society, Gi Hin, whom allied themselves with Raja Mahdi. Raja Asal and Sutton Puesa switched sides to Raja Mahdi, and Kuala Lumpur was captured in 1872 and burnt to the ground. Yap escaped to Klang where he assembled another fighting force and recaptured Kuala Lumpur in March 1873, defeating Raja Mahdi's forces with the help of fighters from Pahang. The war and other setbacks, such as dropping tin prices, led to a slump. A major outbreak of cholera caused many to flee. The slump lasted until late 1879, when rising prices for tin allowed the town to recover. In late 1881, the town was severely flooded, after a fire that had destroyed the entire town in January. With the town being rebuilt a few times and having thrived, this was due in large to Yap Aloy. Yap, together with Frank Swedenham who was appointed the resident in 1882, were the two most important figures of early Kuala Lumpur with Swetnam credited with its rapid growth and development and its transformation into a major urban center. The early Chinese and Malay settled along the east bank of the Klang River. The Chinese mainly settled around the commercial center of Market Square. The Malays, and later Indian Chetiars and Muslims, resided in the Java Street area, now Jalan Tun Perak. In 1880, the colonial administration moved the state capital of Selangor from Klang to the more strategically advantageous Kuala Lumpur, and British resident William Bloomfield Douglas decided to locate the government buildings and living quarters to the west of the river. Government offices and a new police headquarters were built on Bukit Aman, and the Padang initially created for police training. The Padang, now known as Merdeka Square, would later become the center of the British administrative offices when the colonial government offices moved to the Sultan Abdul Samad building in 1897. Thank you for watching this video. Kindly subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and families. See you in the next one.